Hey guys, it's Rob from Rome again and uh, for Backcountry Skiing Canada and uh, we're going to talk about skis and we're in a very kind of specific place here in the Kootenays. Um, touring in the Kootenays really means chasing the powder and yes, it means that pretty much on the coast just as much as in the Rockies but our skis I would say are a little bit more dialed for sort of deeper snow. Um, part of what happens here, so what do I mean by bigger skis? We always look at three dimensions on each and every ski. Every ski has that written somewhere. Um, most of them describe that in some way or, or possibly they, they try to at least give us an idea between side cuts and radiuses and all that kind of old school fun stuff. But the reality for what we sell is that most of our skis are 100 mil underfoot or wider. What does that mean? That means that they provide a little bit more flotation it also provides a little bit ease of turn in the powder uh, and also what it provides is potentially a little bit more weight on the way up but our thinking has always been that maybe a little sacrifice on the way up is goes a long way in helping out on the way down um, our selection here is is actually quite simple we we've simplified most of our wall to really define what the skier that's coming through the door trying to tell us what they're going to be doing. So our narrower skis are really into two categories. One is sort of the lighter weight touring ski, a little narrower underfoot, or a slightly narrower, a little bit more what I would call a 50-50 ski, something that you can definitely ski in bounds and then go for an occasional walk with. Now there's a whole bunch of other technologies going on other than just dimension underfoot. Obviously, there's three dimensions, at least three dimensions on each ski, which speaks to side cut and the turning radius. There's also profiling on skis, and I'll pick the, the big boys here because they're really easy to show. Something that is kind of wild in the fact that there's basically zero to no camber. And now, what I mean by that is notice how the ski actually bends away from each other versus a traditional ski. that have camber and bend towards each other. You think in really simple principles, this ski was designed to put the pressure onto the edge while weighted, and then the pressure basically goes onto the snow, allowing us to carve a turn. The reverse of that, in the simplest of terms, allows us to go on top of the snow and also change the angle of how we're basically moving through the snow, allowing us to ski through powder or softer snow a little faster. The beauty of this is that, and it's our belief that reverse camber or at least early rise skis, and what I mean by that is something that has a hint of camber underneath, but in reality, not that much. This style of a ski will allow a skier in the backcountry to tackle some of the most challenging of the conditions. So, I mean, we chase powder, but what if that powder happens to have a little bit of wind skin on it or a little temperature change? These skis will allow to basically move through that terrain and that, those conditions a lot easier. Um, camber skis for backcountry, do they make sense? They sure do if you're sort of into a bit more of a classic way of skiing. We would say that that's probably something that kind of complicates life a little bit. Everything in that ski is designed to make that ski dive. Everything in an early rise or no camber or reverse rock, whatever you want to call it, allows the other type to come up to the top. You want to be on top of the snow in order to maneuver, in order to pivot, in order to be able to disengage that edge and move through softer snow. Um, as you can tell, even with our little simple wall, we have a lot of variety, lots of options, um, a lot of different shapes to the skis, a lot of different side cuts, radiuses. This is where you need to come in and ask us about it a little bit. One of the most important things in choosing a backcountry ski, as much as it's width and flex and all those fun, fun things, um, is really length. 
length is very, very important. Um, all of us tr want to charge big lines and, and have these great videos and, and images of ourselves skiing down, you know, three turns down a thousand foot face. And as cool as that seems, and as, as often as that happens once or twice a year, uh, the reality of it is that a lot of times we're having to deal with a, first and foremost, a skin track on the way up, and then second and foremost, most likely a treat or, or a fairly, um, fairly complicated run that maybe doesn't necessarily allow us to open up that, that, that full on, you know, 210 centimeter, 120 underfoot ski. Length of ski is very important. And we always feel that on the way up, you want maybe a ski that is shorter rather than longer. So, you know, if you're hanging out and, and you're sort of between the 178 and the 184 length, consider the options. And uh, weight to length ratio definitely matters as well, but it goes a little bit out the window when you're starting to introduce really wide dimensions in skis. So length becomes really, really important. You're gonna be going up, that is where you're gonna be spending most of your time, as, as much as we'd love to have these three hour downhill runs. Um, the ability to do a kick turn, the ability to hang on in the skin track, the ability to go off camber a little bit is gonna definitely be affected by the length of the ski. That is why it's so crucial.